Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Adrian. I'm Nick. And welcome to another episode of Connect. Uh, today we're going to dive into one of the technologies inside of the Simplink platform, uh, specifically Zigbee. And today we brought in Jason Bloomquist to talk a little bit about what Zigbee has to offer inside of the Simplink platform. Uh, so thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what Zigbee is and maybe how it differs from some of the other technologies inside of the Simplink platform? Sure. So. Zigbee is another wireless protocol, sort of like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but it has some big differences that make it really good for certain spaces like home automation, building automation, and smart grid. Um, some of these things are, it has support for very low powered uh, devices that can last multiple years on a certain battery, like a coin cell or a you know, AA battery. And also it supports large and spread out networks that have a multi-hop topology. So if you want to have a network full of maybe 100 nodes, Zigbee is a really good choice for a protocol. Awesome. And when you say multi-hop, are, are, are we talking about a mesh type of network here? Exactly. So if you have, um, you know, if you have an end device that is two or three parent devices away from your centralized node, that's what I'm talking about when I say a multi-hop network. Yeah, and so can you break down some of the Zigbee device roles uh, in the network? Because with other protocols like Thread and BLE and all these different protocols, there's naming conventions uh, unique to the protocol. Sure. So Zigbee has three main device roles. Um, you have your coordinator, which is your central device. Um, it's generally uh, responsible for doing key exchange and authenticating new devices into the network. You also have routers, which are your parent devices. They're always on, and they're responsible for routing messages throughout the network. And then you have your sleepy end devices, which are generally your battery power devices. They can move around the network between parents, but they only communicate directly with their parent. Cool. Okay. And uh, the, the Simplink products, I guess in this particular instance, the CC26X2 products, uh, these have the ability of operating in any of those roles? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and so we're hearing a lot in the market now about Zigbee 3.0, and it's available and out there, and we're starting to see products. Uh, can you start to tell us a little bit high level about what Zigbee 3.0 brings to the table. Yeah, sure. So Zigbee 3.0 has a couple big advantages over previous Zigbee profiles. Um, first of all, it introduces some new security um, into the network. Um, it allows you to do what's called install codes, which allow you to avoid over-the-air key exchange with a well-known key, uh, which is really good because that means if somebody is sniffing your network, they can't get your network keys. Um, it also gives you um, backwards compatibility with uh, the Zigbee Home Automation Profile, which is the most common profile that was used in the past for certification. So if you design a Zigbee 3.0 product today, it will be backwards compatible with products that are already in the market. Okay, good. Yeah, and so um, outside of the security features, is there anything else important that Zigbee 3.0 brings uh, and the backward compatibility? So in the past, there were a lot of different Zigbee profiles. There was home automation, there was building automation, there was health. All of these Zigbee profiles have been deprecated now, and basically Zigbee 3.0 brings a unified application profile. So what that does is it gives you a consistent behavior for commissioning for every type of Zigbee 3.0 device, which okay. is, I mean, it makes it much easier to form large topologies of lots of different types of devices. Okay. Awesome. Um, so I know uh, Zigbee and Thread share some similarities, sharing the same sort of Mac layer, but I guess with Zigbee, they kind of cover the rest of the OSI layer as well. Uh, can you kind of walk through why that might be important to a developer? Yeah, sure. So Thread and Zigbee do share the same Mac layer. Um, Thread, at its core, is basically a network layer specification. So you have a Mac layer and a networking layer. Zigbee, though, has a Mac layer, a network layer, and an application layer defined. And why that's important for the developer is if you're trying to make sure that your device is going to be interoperable with other devices that are already on the market, Zigbee has a well-defined application layer. Oh, cool. Okay. And then that means you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You kind of guarantee exactly. your part will work with multiple hubs out in the market. Yep. Cool. Does that have anything to do with the Zigbee cluster library? I've heard a lot about that, and to be honest, I'm not really sure what it is. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is and why we care about it? Sure. So the Zigbee cluster library defines all of the application layer clusters that a developer can give their device. And what the Zigbee Alliance does with those clusters is they define a uh, set of rules and you as a device manufacturer have to go through Zigbee certification in order to wear the Zigbee badge in your product. So if you want to create a device such as you know, a door lock, a Zigbee door lock, um, there is a specific set of clusters which your, your door lock has to support and then you have to go and take your device to the Zigbee Alliance and go through their certification procedure in order to make sure that it's interoperable with other door locks that are on the network. Okay. Or in the market. <coughs> in the market, not on the network. 
And I, and I know for a lot of Zigbee developers, uh, low power is a, is a key care about. Is there anything we're doing to help developers enable that? So with the Zigbee 3.0 specification, one of the things that Zigbee parent devices, routers and coordinators have to do is support routing of green power packets. Uh, green power devices are a new thing that we're supporting in our Simplink SDK, and what that allows you to do are have extremely low power nodes in your network, um, things that could be even energy harvesting applications, um, and uh, these devices can communicate with any uh, TI Zigbee 3.0 certified device. Very and cool. so from my understanding, uh, energy harvesting application, you could actually have a batteryless application uh, yeah. with the green power specification. Exactly. So Very cool. um, some of the, uh, one of the common applications, um, this is a, a tactile switch that can harvest energy just from the uh, actuation of the switch. I the guess. actuation of the switch, exactly. Yeah, okay. That's incredible. Yeah. Very cool. All right, well, uh, thanks, Jason. Thanks for coming and teaching us a little more about Zigbee. It's one of my favorite protocols. We're not supposed to pick favorites. Uh, and thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Connect. Don't forget, we actually have a Zigbee demo released already with Steve, uh, who took us through a Zigbee sensor to cloud demo. Make sure to watch that. Uh, if you have any sort of suggestions or feedback on topics, tweet at us, at sensor to cloud, with any topics. And be sure to tune in next week. We have a very cool SimpleLink-based demo coming up. Thanks, guys.